Now here, the reason I want this up here, this is 1997. This was actually the unit Dr. Croft used to refer his patients to in the early 80s. It's called a video fluoroscopy machine. And that's not what we do, but let me show you. As she moves, the bones are white like an x-ray, the background's black, but as she moves, guess what happens? I can't see any bones. It blurs. It was high radiation. The quality just wasn't there. But again, did anybody have computers in the early 80s hooked to the internet? No. So we've come a long way with our computer technology. So I just want to show this is not what we do. So don't, don't talk to your insurance company saying we're doing video fluoroscopy. This is what they think of video fluoroscopy. They don't respect this because it's non you can't diagnose. Let me freeze this. Here's that animated MRI. And this is where I like to point out these discs are the white areas. If my pointer, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Believe it or not, nine out of 10 doctors will say, yeah, those are the discs in the neck. Nine out of 10 lawyers will say, yeah, I have to be smarter than the doctors. Those are the discs in the neck. When in reality, this is C3. C2 is here, C1 up here, occiput. 30% of the neck is above here. That set of bones, those three bones, are above this last disc. That's why MRIs can't diagnose headaches. This is the back of the neck where the facet joints are, right and left. Can't see them. Again, the person isn't standing, they're lying down. And they legally have to put animation on here because it's that looping together. So I just want to point out there is a major difference. Because a lot of lawyers will say, oh, we use motion MRI. And I go, well, there really isn't motion. And let me tell you why it doesn't find the injury. Next, what we're going to see is DMX or digital motion x-ray, which we made the bones black. We made the background white. And our bones almost look like they're outlined with black. Like, a black, like I took a black magic marker and outlined my bones. Reason is our technology blackens the cortical margin of the bodies. So in other words, we highlight. And you're gonna see a couple things here. Let me freeze this. This lady came to me and says, no one can figure out what's wrong. I said, I go, I'm no rocket scientist, but I go, just, just tell me when it hurts. She goes, well, every time I bring my chin to my chest and I look up is when I feel the most pain. I said, well, go ahead and move. So right away, we can follow the George's line or backside of these bones up, and we have a stair step in here. That is a torn posterior longitudinal ligament here. We actually have an avulsion fracture here that's gonna float up and down our throat. We're gonna have an interspinous ligament. These two spinuses are close. These are big, it's already ripped apart. Plus, if you look at this vertebral body that's outlined with this black magic marker, it's nice and square. We look at this vertebral body and what happened here? It sloped down. That's an anterior wedge compression fracture. Yes, attorneys, compression fracture. This is serious, and below it's a compression fracture, deformity. So let me, you can see the floating avulsion, torn posterior, watch these interspinous ligaments here. These two will come together in a minute. And again, do you think this is more than 0 0.06 millimeters? I mean, if everybody can see this, we have, watch these two come together, right there. So that's we take an x-ray, that looks fine, we don't see no avulsion fracture, everything lines up. So let me go on to point out where these ligaments are now, just to refresh your mind. Anterior longitudinal ligaments in the front of the bones, the bodies. And when they tear, they make sounds like that, and it's called a sub failure. Watch it again, it either shifts back or it rocks up. There we go, sub failure, the anterior longitudinal, so you change the disc angle. Now we did one other, th one other thing with this technology, because the lawyers always said, why can't I see my client? State Farm thinks you guys are throwing x-rays at me of someone else. So we added a picture and picture board so we digitally look at your patient on the outside. So we see Susie here and we're looking inside simultaneously. It becomes alive. Everybody loves watching movies today. We send this to the insurance adjusters, they go nuts. It scares the heck out of them and they just want to settle. So what we do is we can see Susie, her complaint was stabbing pain when she looks up towards the ceiling. And if you follow this George's line up right there, bam, it comes back. That's a shift shearing backwards, tearing of the anterior longitudinal ligament. We freeze it, we add arrows, we send the tape into the insurance company, and right there is actually that disc angulation. I mean, right there, the disc is pinching in the front right there, and it's gapping in the back. That's an increased disc angle, which indicates a posterior longitudinal ligament injury too. So she has an anterior and a posterior longitudinal ligament permanently. Young girl, never be the same. Chiropractor kept adjusting, you know, I mean, 30, 40 times. And I said, well, it's, no, it's a chronic case. She's going to need chiropractic for the rest of her life. But at least now we can have someone pay for it. Posterior longitudinal ligament is in the back of the neck. If the bone shifts forward, we tear that posterior. Or like on the girl we just saw, this bone is going to rock upward. 
increasing that disc angle like, like I just showed you. And here you can see right away, you follow, it drops down right there. And it's fixed. This bone isn't moving. So this shifts way down, and that's almost 3.5 millimeters. This, a neurosurgeon sends, they, we get cases all the time. He goes, I just wanted to make sure all I had to do is pull this one back and line it up. I didn't know if I had to do three levels. So we went ahead and did a quick DMX, gave him the videotape. He goes, this is unbelievable. He goes, I probably would have done three levels. Now I'm only going to do one. Because I can see the other ones are OK. It's this right here is the only problemed area. Another little avulsion there. Interspinous ligaments are the ligaments in the back of the neck again. When they tear, they separate. And that's where we can pick this up beautifully. And you'll see this girl, her interspinous ligaments are so torn, she almost dislocates her facets right here. It almost pops over on some of these lower ones. You can see the disc angles, they touch, and then these open up and almost, she goes a little bit further, she would probably dislocate her neck. You can just see it sliding back and forth. Again, young lady, three years, no one could tell what was wrong. An anesthesiologist from the hospital sent her to us. She says, I give up, I can't figure out. Capsular ligaments, right and left in the back. When they tear, they gap open. Dr. Bogduke says 54% of the people have this after whiplash, but we don't do any tests to show it. Just unbelievable. Your eyes should go, flexion oblique should go right there. Facets should be touching. These two bones are torn apart, a little bit there and a little bit there, but really gapping here. She, when she looks up towards the ceiling, her bones aren't even going back together. That's how bad it is. Now wait till you see the other side. The insurance company on this one said she was faking it. Her bills were $35,000. They said, we're going to give you 20 and you go take a loan out. So the lawyer, I did this. We went to court. We went to court. And $164,000 later, they paid all her bills. And the attorney goes, I can't believe this. Watch right here. These two bones will separate. And she said, that's right where my pain was, back in her neck, right there. So we froze this image, blew it up to poster size, aimed it, played the video. You can't fake it. We showed the truth, told the truth, and they, they pay. They have no problem paying as long as you show it. There it is again. The key is most people can't show it. Upper cervical ligaments, accessory ligaments hold C, C1 to C2. I'm going to sort of fast forward through this. C1 up here, I'm going to try to freeze this. C1 is not supposed to hang off C2, five millimeters, right there. She, her head, she said, felt like it wasn't attached. This C1 is hanging off almost five millimeters right there. Remember when I shook my bones? This is that patient. Headaches all the time. No one can figure out what's, what's wrong. C1 is sloppy all over the place. We can see the patient, sent the tape in, they pay the bills or settle the case. Let me speed through this. Oh, here, here's, a, here's one that most people think you don't find. Torn transverse ligament supports the back, prevents that spinal cord from hitting the odontoid. As it slides forward, increases the ADI space. This girl, no one could figure out was wrong. Everybody thought she was faking it, even her doctor. I said, when does it hurt? She goes, when I bring my head, watch this gap right there. C1 is loose. C1 is sliding. Look at that big gap right there. I mean, and I called the doc up. I said, are you adjusting C1? He goes, three times a week. And I said, God, look at the videotape. Lighten up up there. I go, her, C her C1's not attached. She's getting cord pressure. Her symptomatic complaint, just to share with you, she's a she works on babies. She goes, every time I brought my head down, I would drop the baby. And I said, well, that's pretty significant. And so we went ahead and just mimicked the motion that caused the pain. And I go, whoa, you have a torn transverse ligament. Here's these alar ligaments up here. Again, attaching occiput to C2 odontoid. And this will be an example of a unilateral area. C1 lines up perfectly here, but watch this side over here. It hangs off. His complaint was one-sided headaches, and it was driving the doctor crazy. See, C1 stays nice here, but when he comes over here, there it goes. Hangs off. So everyone's different. Some people say, oh, that looks normal to me. It's not. Yeah, we could do all fit. We could do everybody in this room. Everybody C1 will be looking different. Fractures we find all the time that x-rays miss. This guy owns an x-ray company. We did the motion x-ray on his neck. I go, when did you break your C2 spinous? He goes, I never broke my neck. And I said, well, what the heck's this? He goes, we've taken 100 x-rays of my neck because every new machine we buy, we do x-rays on me. I go, look how it's floating. This amazes some of the neurosurgeons how much a bone can float missed because when he was not moving it looked like it was attached oh here's another transverse ligament look at this 
the, everybody thought she was faking it. Watch her C1. It's going to shift. Ooh. It'll shift back again, but you'll see her lose. You'll see her lose her balance here outside, and in. So she's like going, "Whoa!" The the doctor goes, "I can't believe it. Her head's not attached. That's a torn transverse ligament. These are significant, serious injuries." Let me speed through these. Here, here was a poor guy. Oh, three. Well, let me explain real quick. Was in one automobile accident in Naples, Florida. Went to his neurosurgeon. He said, oh, we have too many loose bones here. We need a wire fuse you together. So he had a wire fusion. Five years later, he gets in a low-speed auto accident, and State Farm says there's no way these low-speed auto accidents can cause any pain, and he gets in another auto accident. Three years, the guy's taking, taking pain medications. He's, he, he came to us. He goes, if you can't find out what's wrong with me, I am telling you I am checking into a mental institution because I'm addicted to these drugs, and I'm crazy. And I said, well, when does it hurt? It's my favorite line. And he goes, well, when I bring my chin to my chest and I look up, it feels like someone's got an ice pick jabbing me in the neck. I've never heard that before. And I said, well, I said, let's take a look. So start moving. All of a sudden, my eyes go right to the titanium steel. It is broken in five places, 300 pounds per square inch strength. But State Farm says low-speed auto accidents don't cause damage. Torn steel, torn steel, torn steel on both sides. But the guy's bleeding internally every day of his life, every time he moves. He's not crazy. The neurosurgeon absolutely said my wire job was perfect. There was no fractures in the wire. Look at this hook. I showed this to the guy. The guy started crying right there, 38 years old. He goes, you're the only doctor who ever told me I'm not crazy. I go, of course you're not crazy. Yeah, I go, you just got a bunch of broken wire we need to get removed. Is that amazing? Why would that show up on a flexion? Because when they, when they took those flexion views at, or, and again, one, one thing I haven't touched on, I'm glad someone brought that up. I am taking 30 digital x-rays every second. 30 x-rays every second. So why, how would it, sh could it have shown up on one or two x-rays? Possibly. But for me to do that, I took like 2,700 x-rays in a series and were able to pick it up. I didn't pick it up on all of them. It was only at certain angles, and that was the oblique. So the answer is you could if you knew which of the 2,700 views to push the button. We're not that good. So that's why this technology is so superior. And that brings up, I was in court just three weeks ago, and they said, how come you always find the injury and our doctors don't? And I said, well, it's easy. I go, it's technology. And I said, how many x-rays did your doctor take? And they go, well, he took five. And I said, well, I took 2,700. And I printed every one up. He had a whole stack three inches thick. I go, how could I miss the injury? Juries understand that. That's why we're, they're selling before court. I go into these depots with every image freeze-framed. I mean, it's actual x-rays. Now, here was my worst patient. Worst patient, Tampa General said nothing was wrong with a C1. His neck was broken and missed on x-rays. His head is not attached. It's only spinal cord holding his head on. Anth I didn't notice that. I mean, as Anthony brought his head, I looked up. He dropped to the ground, and I called 911. And I thought the guy was going to die. Here's another one. He was OK. They wired him together. Here's another one here. Boom. Now, I see these all the time. And I, if, you, if you've seen what I've seen, you, you want to touch anybody until you, you've done one of these. It's just amazing. Yeah. Shoulders are incredible. Jose, let me freeze this. Jose went to the orthopedic surgeon. Guess how many MRIs? It's the golden standard, five. They said, Jose, stand still, don't move. And they took an MRI, five negative MRIs. The treating doctor took 30 non-moving x-rays, all normal. So I go to Jose, I go, I'm no rocket scientist again, but how does it hurt? Because I keep telling all you doctors, when I lift my arm above my head, my shoulder pops out of place. So I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm the guy's listening to you. Lift your arm above, above your head, watch it pull out of place. There it goes. So I went to the orthopedic surgeon, I go, there's your problem. You never asked him to move. See, technology has advanced so much that this makes treating patients easy, because we can see. And again, for you attorneys out there, watch his face after it pops out of place, Boom, look at him grimace with pain. He's like, oh, you can't fake that. It's there. They don't take that in the court. They settle it before. Re elbows, everybody's hanging on the steering wheel. We got a little avulsion fracture. Orthopedic surgeon did all his work up, took x-rays, said nothing's wrong. He's a chiropractor friend of mine. He says, John, I can't extend my arm. And I said, well, if it hurts trying to extend it, try to extend it, and you'll see a little joint mouse, right? That's an avulsion fracture. So he's got a broken bone that's catching in the hinge. So it's not enabling him to straighten his arm all the way out. Being a chiropractor, you need that ability because that's what you're treating your patients with. We do wrists. A couple of people had asked me about wrists. 
Here's a, an, a, an attorney who drove five hours. He said, every time I deviate my wrist downward, I feel pain. His, the best hand surgeon in Boca Raton, Florida said there's nothing wrong right there. A crack right in the scaphoid or navicular bone, if you call it. That's that bone that if you don't catch this fracture early, it'll degenerate and go away, avascular necrosis. So it's an important area. Again, auto accident, grab the steering wheel. His, his doctor said, Tim, you're just a wimp. And I said, no, Tim, you're not a wimp. You actually broke your wrist. And he was like, yeah, oh, I mean, oh, really? You know, because it's, it's part of a case. <laughs> now, you know, here's, you're seeing extra hands in this x-ray because this doctor was so determined because State Farm wasn't going to pay his bills. He's a hand surgeon. He goes, I know there's something wrong with this wrist, so he's in there. I mean, he, he goes, I don't care. I'm going to get into the x-ray. So I said, okay. So wait, wait till he turns the wrist laterally, and you'll see what happens to these bones here. There it goes. Cool. I mean, can you all see this? I mean, I don't know if you guys are radiologists, but I, th I think this is pretty clear. Pops right out place, said, send the tape, pay my bills. And that's a permanent injury. That was torn ligaments. 